Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to part four of Super Detailing, the Tamiya 1 to 3 50th scale USS Missouri. In part four, we'll focus our attention on super detailing the fire control radars, we'll build the photo etch cranes and the catapults, and we'll work on all of the guns, including the 3D printed guns. The Edward detail parts for the Mark 8 fire control radar are nicely detailed, but the angle on the framing is wrong. I tried cutting the framing off and attaching these small parts separately after the base was glued into place, but it wasn't an acceptable solution and it just doesn't look right. So instead, I used the gold metal model photo wedge parts. To make construction easier, the holes on the gold metal model's Mark 8 plates were drilled out with a .0136 number 80 drill bit, while the parts were still attached to the photo wedge sheet. The side frames on the gold metal model's parts were bent into shape, test fitted, and tweaked. The die poles were bent into shape, slipped through the slightly enlarged holes on the plate, and then glued to a .06 by .08 strip of plastic. The kit's part was elevated and secured with masking tape so the framing could be attached easier. A .012 inch diameter wire applicator was used to apply tiny beads of superglue around the perimeter of each of the frames. The plastic strip on the center assembly was form fitted into place between the framing by shaving off tiny pieces of plastic until its fit between the framing was snug. The Mark 8 fire control radars look pretty good and they are ready to be painted. To provide a stronger assembly for the gold metal model's catapults, 0 0.02 by 0 0.02 inch strips were superglued to the inside tops of the photo etch catapult frames. The side frames of the catapults were bent up using a metal ruler and a single edge razor blade. The front and rear plates were bent up using tweezers. The framing has been bent into shape and tiny beads of superglue are applied along the seam lines between the end plates and the side frames. To reinforce the frame assembly, 0 0.02 by 0 0.02 inch strips were superglued into place at these locations. The catapult tops were positioned and beads of superglue were applied to the inside areas through the openings in the framing using a 0 0.012 inch stiff diameter brass wire applicator. The catapult bases were laminated to 0 0.02 inch thick plastic sheeting to make them stronger. The plastic was carefully trimmed around the photo etch base and then finished with a sanding stick. The centering rings from the kit's catapults were removed by cutting the surrounding plastic off and then running the parts across stationary pieces of sandpaper to make the plastic paper thin. The discs just popped out of the paper thin plastic. With a hole drilled through the new base with a 0 .052 inch bit, both parts can easily be lined up. The rod superglued to the bottom of the catapult is 0 0.05 inches in diameter and it will serve as a pin for the base and the centering ring. The base was in position at the bottom of the catapult and superglued into place with tiny drops of superglue. The forward catapult catwalks were shaped first. The railings were bent up first and then the positioning stubs were bent. The forward catwalk was positioned and then superglued into place with tiny drops of superglue applied with a 0 0.012 inch diameter wire applicator. Note the positioning of the forward catwalk with respect to the end of the catapult. This positioning is important. 
The aft catwalks for the catapults were then shaped. The railings were bent up, just as in the forward parts, and then the positioning tabs were bent. However, I had to cut the positioning tabs off because they interfered with its placement. The aft catapult catwalk has been glued into place. To strengthen the assembly, small lengths of 0 0.02 by 0 0.02 plastic strips were superglued to the underside of the forward area of each catapult assembly. Each catapult assembly got a 0 0.029 inch diameter brass rod shaped for the compressed air piping and a 0 0.06 by 0 0.08 inch half rounds were used for the motors. Edward framing details were added then the cradles, and finally the centering discs. To make the gold metal model's crane assembly stronger and to provide for a larger gluing surface, 0 0.01 by 0 0.02 inch strips were superglued along the inside areas of the framing. The top edges of the crane frame were folded inward first. Then the lower framing on the left was folded up about halfway, and then the center framing was folded up. The framing is almost completely closed up. A length of plastic was inserted inside the framing to hold it steady while the bending was completed with tweezers. With the crane frame folding complete, beads of superglue were applied at the frame connection areas. The kit's base was cut off and discs were added to the base so the frame would fit tightly onto it. The discs were made from 0.015 inch thick plastic and punched out with a Waldron number no. 3 punch. The crane was positioned onto the base and held in place with a paint bottle and super glued to the base at the frame connection points on the discs. Note the positioning of the frame's stubs on the discs. The kit's A-frame was modified, and 0.01-inch thick discs were glued to the sides of the photo etch pulleys to give them more depth. These were made with a number 4 Waldron punch. The photo etch cable frame is from the Edward detail set, and its pulley was also made with various Waldron punches. The photo etch pulley assembly and the cable frame have been superglued into place. A strong back for the A-frame was made from a 0 0.03 inch diameter plastic rod and the tiny photo etch bracing at the top arrow came from the Edwards set. Additional tiny discs were made with a Waldron punch and they were inserted into the openings where the aircraft hook photo etch parts attached to. The photo etch parts were then slid in between the discs. The 16-inch guns had mold lines around the entire perimeter of each gun, which needed to be carefully scraped off. Careful light scraping with a sharp number 11 X-Acto blade held at approximately a 45-degree angle will remove these mold lines. After scraping, the round shape of the guns can be restored by rotating the barrels inside a fine steel wood pad. This also polishes the plastic. Center punch the tip of each barrel and drill out the tips starting with a 0 0.028 inch bit and work up to a 0 0.039 inch bit. If you try to remove too much plastic too fast, you will collapse the sides of the plastic walls, ruining the part. The barrels are now complete and now it's time to start working on the turrets. The turrets were cleaned up and all the remaining tree stubs have been removed and carefully sanded smooth. Edward photo etch details were added to the optical range finders. Some of the barrels had their back ends modified so that the individual barrels could be positioned at different elevations. Rod was added to the backside of each barrel and corresponding holes drilled into the turrets for positioning. The tree stubs on the 16-inch turret 40mm Bofor platforms are attached to the upper edges of these parts where there is a lip. Use snippers to remove the stubs and then carefully smooth the edges with a smooth sanding stick. The Black Cat model's 3D printed 5-inch 38 turrets 
come with two sets of barrels, so you can attach them in different elevated positions. Cut the 3D stems that are connected to the optical ports first, then slice off the remaining ones at the base. Also, cut the stems connecting the barrels at their bases. Once the turrets are removed, you can cut the stems off the bases of the turrets with the tip of a number 11 X-Acto blade. There are tiny gun sight rings at the tops of the turrets just in front of the hatches, so be careful not to damage them. The positioning stubs at the base of the turrets has to be cut off and drilled out for their locations on the Missouri. The bases have a slight concave shape, so run them across a stationary piece of sandpaper to flatten them out and then carefully drill a pilot hole. The holes need to be progressively enlarged to 0 0.092 inches in diameter. If you try to remove too much material at once, it will crack around the edges. The 3D printed 5 inch 38 barrels are easy to clean up. However, it is also easy to damage the bases while cutting, so go slow and carefully position the number 11 X-Acto blade. The quad 40mm Bofor platforms have impressive surface detail. To remove them, cut the stems at the base of the 3D printed block and then flip them over and trim off the stems from each part using a snipper. The photo wet splinter shields are easy to shape and the back sides have etched fold lines. There are two tiny ledges on the front of the platform that the bottoms of the splinter shields sit on. The back sides of the shields just sit against the platform base. Use tiny drops of super glue to attach the splinter shields. The 40 mm guns have tiny pins on both sides and they fit into the tiny depressions on the frames. If you use white glue to attach them, you can make adjustments to the elevations later if both guns are not in the same angle. Note how the plastic strips are positioned. The base of the ball sword also has a piece of masking tape folded over itself so that the base will be secure while the splinter shields and guns are attached. The Blue Ridge model's 20mm guns have superb detail and no assembly is required. Remove one side of the 3D printed block and then cut the stems at their bases. Snip off the two stems at the base of the gun and then the one from the wheel. Then snip off the two stems at the bottom of the gun shields. Finally, snip off the stems on the upper shoulder rest and then the stems on the lower shoulder rest. A final fit check of all of the main parts on the bow area is complete and everything looks good. The final fit check on the forward superstructure shows that everything fits and that the forward mast and yard arm are straight and level. The aft superstructure also looks good and the 3D pinnard accessories will greatly enhance the level of detail and accuracy on the completed model. The added parts on the catapults and the crane really help add detail to the stern area. The 3D printed Mark 37 radars really look good. The 3D printed quad bofors even have the curved open 40mm brass shell collection and ejection details. You could never achieve this with tiny photo etch details. This concludes part four of Super Detail in the Tamiya 1 to 350 of scale, USS Missouri. And stay tuned for part five when we start airbrushing all of the parts starting with the hull. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads, including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music, and happy scale modeling!